breakneck. Uh, I'm gonna be going over breakneck. a little bit of hardware uh, I'm hacking. gonna be going over and you might think, hardware okay, hacking. Hardware hacking. And you might think, pick up okay, iron, hardware hacking. Pick up a solder and iron to start uh, digging. There's quite a bit of something. process to it. Uh, but there's quite a bit of and process so to it. And so that process all starts out with. And an idea so that process of, all starts out okay. with an idea of. I've got this piece of hardware. Okay. It I've doesn't. Got do this piece I of hardware. Do. It I've doesn't do something it. I want to do. Uh, from, from there you got to go. From there you got to go and reverse engineer the hardware you're going to hack and figure out how it works so that you can find some kind of an entry point. Design everything else that goes around that. Design everything else that goes around that. Build it, test it. Does your extra function. Build it, test it. It. Repeat the whole process. Realize all over it doesn't again. work. Repeat the whole process all over again, and eventually get it working. So the first step is the idea. I so the first step is the idea. Come up with. I have no clue what you guys are going to come uh, up that, with. Yeah, that spark of creativity. Uh, but it's that you know really that spark of creativity. It really gets the whole ball. Wow really. me, show what you, you can do. Wow me, show what you can do. Wow me, what you can do. So when you go about reverse engineering. So product, when you go about reverse engineering. There are a few things that'll help you product. figure out what you're doing. There are a few things that'll help you figure uh, out what you're doing. The first thing is markings uh, on any The first chip. thing is just markings on any chip. Just about anything out there has a Just about sheet. anything out there has a data sheet. It might be in Chinese, but it might be in Chinese, but and usually you get some idea of what a part of a circuit is. And usually get some idea of what a part of a circuit's doing. From that you can keep digging into uh, what's around it. From that you can it. keep digging into map out what's around it. Map out the traces on the board, look at all the little passive components around it. You might run into resistors. You might run into resistors. Knowing how to read color codes tells you what values you're dealing with. Right, surface mount ones are done with numbers. Right, surface mount ones really are done with numbers because really they really don't. Them very well. You can't really read them very well. Knowing how to read the polarity of knowing a how to like read the polarity of a component, like a capacitor or a diode, comes in very handy and at this point. Then you work through. And you know, parts then are, you work through. And you know, you parts are. And you need to start looking at what signals. You got You got a multimeter. You got tools. You got a multimeter. You, you, got a multimeter, you can measure your voltage going uh, out of some place. Resistance. Current, resistance, those kind of things. Uh, even more useful is an oscilloscope. Uh, even more useful is an oscilloscope. That one's probably uh, pretty expensive. But there are lots of good uh, options out there. You can but get there are one. lots of good options like out this there. Little you thing can get one. About hundred bucks. Like this little thing for um, about a hundred bucks. And when you start peeking um, into exactly what signals and when you start peeking into exactly what signals running, are present on a board useful. while it's running, it's you very very useful. You can figure out whether you're using some kind of crazy, serial, kind of crazy protocol, serial protocol what the GPIO might be doing. And then the next step is to design. And then the next step I is to design. For about five years, I can go on for about five years teaching you electrical board. engineering, and you don't get bored. But eventually, you come up with a circuit. But eventually, you come up with a circuit will do the job. that you think will do the job. And the next step is to build it all. And the next step uh, is to build it all. Need. Uh, there are a few uh, tools you need. Some soldering irons like these ones. Uh, some soldering irons like these ones. Set. When you're b building uh, up your tool going set, and going for a solder and iron, what makes uh, a solder and iron good is so, temperature control. So, you know, if you go out to Radio Shack, it's so, you know, if you go out to Radio Shack, and spend it's 15 bucks on a solder and iron, it's a constant power. You plug it in, and, later, it's you plug it in and 10 minutes and later, it's finally hot enough. Yeah, to you use go to clean the tip on the sponge, and it's a little bit too yeah, wet. Yeah, you go to clean the tip on the sponge, and it's a little bit too wet. Suck all the heat out of the tip, you and you get to wait another five minutes. Before so you something like this will run you about a hundred bucks. So something like this will run you about a hundred bucks. What it gets you is a temperature probe uh, in the tip of the iron, and it'll run full blast till it gets up to temperature, and then full blast till it gets up to temperature, and then full constant temperature. You get better results out of it. You get to work a lot quicker, and life is good. Getting the techniques of how we hack. Getting the techniques of how we hack into the board. Uh, this is a modded and PS2, those blue wires, and those blue blue wires I don't know why whatever they're whatever always blue, reason, but for whatever crazy blue. reason, uh, it's just always blue. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's usually about 30, that, that's solid, usually wire. About 30 uh, gauge solid wire, and it actually goes back to, uh, the, good and it actually goes back to the good old days when people used to wire wrap up um, prototype people boards. People don't do that anymore. Because um, you can get people don't do that anymore because you can get prototype now. circuit boards. But the wire is still useful now. for. But the wire is still useful work. for um, doing it's this kind of work. Um, it's small enough that if you have small enough soldering iron, you can hack the wire right onto the leg of a really tiny chip. 
get it exactly where you need it. It's solid core, so you can bend it into any shape, and it'll generally stay in place. It's small enough that you can cram a whole bunch of wires all over a board, and hopefully still fit everything back in the case. Uh, typical techniques are to tape down wires or hot glue them in place so that things don't get fall apart after it's all done. So once it's all done, so once that's all done, you're back into you the same tools you're, you're using. You're back into the same the tools you were using to reverse engineer the product in um, the first place. You know how you think your your circuits should um, function. You know how you think your and your circuit should function. Work the first time. And it's probably not going to work so the first time. So you're into probing things. So with an oscilloscope. you're into Figuring probing things with an oscilloscope. Figuring out what the hell you did wrong. Going back into the loop, fixing things over. Going and over back and into over. the loop, fixing things and over and over and over. Hopefully, you get and the end. Hopefully, you get started out as an off the shelf something uh, that started out as an off the shelf really part that really didn't do anything cool. Combined with some crazy idea of what you think Combined it should, be able, able do, what you think it should be able to do, and now you've got this hacked together really awesome. thing that does something really awesome. So, anyone have any questions? So, comments? anyone have any questions? Michael, comments? I have a question. Go ahead. Oh, I have a question, actually. What Go ahead. Types oh. of projects have you worked on what personally? Types of projects have you worked on right. personally? Uh, so a good example right. uh, at work. Uh, so a good example a uh, at work, we've got and a so 3D printer, it would print in PLA, and so it would do print ABS, in PLA. It, would it wouldn't plate. do ABS. Didn't have a heated so build plate. We went through the process so of we went through the process uh, of adding in uh, a heated build plate to it. Of adding in a heated build so, plate to it. You know, the process so. You know, the come process up is a plate that you come can build up with a plate that you can build that's going to be thermally conductive to replace the acrylic one that came on it, add in heating elements, add temperature and control, interface it all back in and then ultimately the interface printer, it all back so into the 3D the, uh, printer so that you can build turn on the uh, you build plate on and off. And you can take something that is designed to print in one material and now use that 3D printer to print a totally different material. What is your work? Uh, is work your work? With, uh, I work with CNC. I work with CNC cutting equipment. Any other weird projects you? Uh, any other weird projects you were making? Uh, 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 I'm also working on uh, chip computer for my car. I guess another thing that really makes I guess this all another thing, thing that really, really makes this all a lot easier is these days is that the uh, what makes us all a lot easier these days too? What makes us all a lot easier these days too is that there's so many different prototyping platforms out there, most notably the Arduino. If you're gonna where you can, hack into some hardware, if you're gonna no hack into some hardware, you no longer have to design up a circuit board from the ground up. You, know, you can run slap together an Arduino, to whatever else run a couple wires out there. to whatever else you're interested in. So it's become a lot easier. I think that's why it's become a lot more So it's become a lot easier. I think that's why it's become a lot more prevalent these days. What was the PS2 hack? Like, what was that add addition to it for the blue wires? Usually those are just done to. Uh, Usually those are just done run to uh, images of games to off run of hard images drive. of games off of a hard drive. So you can just download any games you want. So you can just download way. any Step games games you want. Just Play them that way instead of having to do this. And is there any um, special or like some, some things that we could we would be a little more prone to um, uh, encounter when connecting certain things? Like what what sort of like a one hit uh, location or something for um, connecting into these things? If that like a roadmap of sort of like some basics of setting the pins. Well, um, I'm not sure if you're asking about well, um, how to know sure where to connect to, about to how to board, know where to connect to in a board, uh, or how to connect to connection. If you're looking for where to connect to, that usually comes in the form so of the data what's on the board. Chip. So you'll look you'll at what's on the board. Start with the largest chips. You'll usually start with the, with the largest and chips and work your way down the list and figure out what everything is. If it's you know maybe a toy that moves around or something, it might have a microcontroller. And so that microcontroller is basically, and so that microcontroller a, tiny is basically a tiny bit of processing power and, and some I/O. You'll find 
and uh, you'll find based on that part number, you'll find uh, data sheet based on that part number, it. you'll find a data sheet and they'll list out the certain pins or power and they'll list out the certain pins or power and certain pins you might do general, general purpose IO, you might have some that can do certain serial protocols. So based on what and you want to add to that, so based on what you you're want to add okay, to that, I you say, okay, I don't have enough extra IO on this chip. They don't want to cut costs. They don't pay anything more, than, they really cost, they don't pay anything more than what they really they needed the on there. But they got the serial bus that's running and the I can product. Some other chip that and rides I can on that put some other chip that rides on that serial bus up. and gives me extra IO. And so you now know what pins to connect to to make that happen. It also gives you a good starting point. Uh, where it also gives you a good starting point uh, uh, where to hook up your oscilloscope and look so for that signal exactly coming across. So you know exactly how they're using um, that pin. And then when it comes um, time to actually solder And then when it comes it, time to actually solder into it, lots of practice it's mostly just good enough equipment lots of practice to and having good enough equipment to, get in. to um, another thing I forgot to mention about um, soldering another thing irons, I forgot to mention about um, soldering irons what also makes uh, them worthwhile. What also makes them uh, and worthwhile worth money on uh, is the ability to get different different money on types. is the ability to get so these two types. that I've got up here so are these two well that I've got brands. up here are I could go find brands. I can go find this thing the total knockoff of this tips. thing except that it doesn't take so the same out so where I can go out and two dozen different get sizes any of about two dozen the different one, sizes and shapes for the, other the good model. one, I can only get four and for the other model. And it might not be able to get something small uh, I might not to get be able to get something small enough to get into a little tiny spot on a chip. Um, one thing um, I can elaborate on uh, one thing I in this whole collaborate on uh, in this whole process of reverse engineering, reverse engineering, a lot of products are pretty uh, easy to reverse engineer. Uh, designers don't get take any time you. trying to get they harder do. on you. Um, but sometimes they do. It's some kind of board that they really want to keep proprietary. There are a few techniques that can go through to make your life a whole lot harder. The first is to physically grind the part numbers off the chips. Everyone's You'll see that. Every once in a while, they just run into that. Everyone's run into that. Um, and it's a surprisingly uh, effective way. And it's a surprisingly effective way of keeping people from figuring uh, out what's going on. The other way of doing it. Uh, the other way of doing it. And sometimes in combination with that is potty. Uh, where they'll take uh, epoxy. It's usually tinted black, black, really dark, and opaque pour black. That epoxy onto the board. And they'll usually pour that epoxy kind of onto the board. Box, usually it's in some kind of a box. And once it all sets it all. up, you've now got this and once it all sets up, you now got this solid chunk of epoxy with a circuit board and all the components in it. And good luck getting it off. They also do that. For, uh, uh, they also do for that for uh, for waterproofing, for mechanical protection, uh, for, mechanical for, variety protection of, uh, for variety of reasons that are just a lot more friendly. But you do see that a lot when they just don't want you to get into their circuit. That was actually going to be my question. That was actually going to be my question. Are you? Do you run into circuits that you cannot reverse engineer when you want to? Or do you? There are. There's always a way. There are. Really there's always like a way. It's, it's, it's really worth like while. cryptography. It's is it worth your while? Um, Everything can be hacked. Um, you can get uh, a lot of microcontrollers. You can get uh, a lot of microcontrollers have, have features code. built into them so to lock out the code. code in you the program this thing. All the code exists in the microcontroller. But you flipped the bit when you programmed it and told that microcontroller that, that, that nobody's ever allowed to read that memory back out through any kind of next external uh, interface. You might also do a little bit of encryption on that code as well. But code really as well. determined to figure out but what's on there. determined to figure out what's on there. You can actually by, uh, read flash removing the epoxy by uh, packaging from the chip. Removing the epoxy packaging from the really chip. Really starting to look at and silicon really starting to look at silicon flash, underneath. Because when you write that flash, that there are physical ways to read that ways. instead of just the normal electronic ways. Now granted you have to have lots and lots of expensive Now granted you have to have lots and lots of expensive equipment, you're probably putting that under an electron microscope at that point. But it's possible. Uh, so there are other uh, 
tools out uh, so there. There are other uh, uh, tools out there. The oscilloscope uh, I showed has the oscilloscope uh, I showed has, has what's called uh, a logic probe on it. Has what's called a logic uh, probe on it. This one doesn't, but higher end ones uh, do. This one doesn't, but higher end ones do. It will allow you to usually do eight or sixteen digital uh, inputs all at once. You could read out an entire parallel uh, port. You could read out an entire parallel port, port exactly into the oscilloscope all at once. See exactly and what's going on. If they got the extra software to do it, if they got the extra software to do it, can actually decode the data that's on a serial or parallel screen. Uh, there are other uh, devices that can connect to a computer that do and a similar so thing, easy to hack into and so it's pretty easy to hack into any kind of data bus moving across the board. And from there, figure out what's going on. And from there, figure out what's going on. Any other questions, comments? Any other Beer. questions, comments? Beer? Beer? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.